let's just throw a suicide play at them. I hope the spell prioritization doesn't screw me over with this, but we'll see. Okay, so we're going to send those three guys in there. We're going to go ahead and drop some of those spells that maybe some of you guys are used to seeing. We're going to... Oops, that guy had uh, the nature gems on him. So let's give him... Mother. Okay, I guess he's my Wrathful Skies guy. There we go. Okay. Let's tell him to, to fire. Because a lot of times people will blink in these groups of mages to do um, suicide plays. Now, they wouldn't necessarily do all of these ones at the same time. Obviously, you'll, you'll normally find one and not the others because they're trying not to kill each other unless they themselves have stacked their resistances and etc. But this is a uh, pretty, I guess, wholesome suicide drop that we're going to toss out there. You can press F to make them fire, but you've got to give them a bow. So let's just go ahead and give them... Uh, let's give them this. Oh, okay. How about Vision's Foe? Okay, I'm just going to click around till I get something. All right, I guess I'm going to click every single thing I don't have. Okay. Okay, let's send these guys out. Have them do their thing. Let's make sure we got our dudes here. Okay, and now we'll see what we're talking about. All right, so we've got the suicide plays going. There we go. Here's our Omni Resist Communion just hanging out. Oh, dang, it actually got the fire elemental. That was kind of cool. Um, so now they're just hanging out here. Uh, the only damage they're going to be taking is... Well, this guy just got clipped by something. So he took a little bit from shock because um, Lightning Rod only does 15 shock resist. And 15 shock resist could be a little on the light side for this. Um, you can see little ticks of the, those red clouds because they're, uh, they're running out of the teeth. But as you can see, our Communion's fine, and this Suicide Drop that they did has probably already left, or they've already thrown returning um, on those guys. So now our mages are hanging out here. They're just like, haha, we won. We're happy. We're fine. And then Niflheim is upset at the world. So... They do what every person who's upset at the world does. And they cast flames from the sky. A few other ones to watch out for. Murdering Winter. Um, so Frost Resist for that. You can only do it once per player per turn. Got a little confused in um, Disciples game recently from that. Leprosy is a nasty one. Uh, but your MR can negate it. So another one to watch out for. Um, what's that other? Winds of Death is another nasty one too. Another MR negates. And you'll see that I build this Omni Resist stacks around um, those sorts of things. Okay, where is this guy? Flames from the sky. Let's blow up those those little guys. And hey, look at that. They are still alive. I don't even notice. Did it cast? Yeah. 
So over here, I'm used to seeing the uh, message appear, but I guess since nothing died, it didn't show it. But now they could survive something like that. So it's extremely handy uh, because this fire resistance. Well, that doesn't really s sound right. I thought it would have dr end. Hmm. Huh. I think it would have done more damage. Okay, but in either case, it's a good way to protect yourself from those late game remotes that would normally wipe out a communion you've got going from point A to B. So it's good stuff to watch out for. Now, um, let's hop into the details. So if we take a look on this chart that I've got on the left, this is my communion spam items list. I've kind of vetted through all of the items in the game to come up with a list of what was the most economic way to create a omni resist communion buff. Here you could see those different resist combos. These are just different combos I came up with and you could see that they land in the range of 30 to 40 gems or so. This one is 30 with uh, 15 blood slaves. I tried doing some wacky on that. But let's jump to it and kind of find out what some of these items that I found were particularly good at being economical for the um, Omni Resist. A big part of this is getting that gem cost down. Omni Resist, in my case, I considered to be elemental resistances combined with uh, MR. So, because that's generally what you'll see a lot of field wipes perform, as well as remotes. One exception to that is earthquake. So, you know, earthquakes can happen, cause damage to your dudes. Uh, any source of regular damage can potentially hit your guys, but I'm considering some more of the more common late game oppressive strats that you'll see. So starting this off, let's take a look at fire. I've got them color coded for path. Ring of fire was pretty solid. Costs only five fire gems, hits you at 15 fire resistance. Generally, you wanna be hitting over 10 fire resistance. 15 is kind of a nice spot for flames from the sky. And for every, it, it should save you most of the time from it. There are a few spells that it won't save you from, but I'm not talking about those. Um, single target AOE spells, single target spells in general. There's gonna be plenty of spells that break through this, but I'm mostly talking about suicide plays and late game drops. And by suicide plays, I mean what I just kind of showed you a second ago. Surprisingly, the Dragon Helm was not very economical in that Five fire resistance isn't really much. It gives you dark vision, it gives you some morale, some protection, but it seems more of something you'd want on a light thug than on somebody in a communion, because um, five, it's kind of got a little while to get you there, so I wouldn't spam this. Fire plate, same kind of deal. Fire in a jar, you get a little bit of cold resist from. So it's kind of neat. If you need a temp gem and you want a little bit of cold resist, you could use that as kind of a double for your fire mage. Other than that, the cold resist is not really notable. But maybe you have a lot of extra fire gems for this because you're going to need to make a handful. And that's one thing I do want to mention is you look at these resist combos. This is per mage. That's expensive. Now each item you could of course reduce by two gems each by doing a dwarven hammer and these numbers will go down a bit maybe by 10 gems eight gems eight to ten on average for for these so having dwarven hammer crafters be able to make these for you is pretty handy but also you're not putting this on every mage you have right 
This is for important communions where you need a communion to go off to win a game. And I'm sure most of you guys have been in those shoes and they suck for little humans. Now also, these combination numbers go down based on your bless. And that's what I'm kind of strategizing over here and talking to myself about is what are kind of efficient blesses for those breakpoints of those danger zones for spells. So if you're already running shock resist, if you're all running, already running frost uh, cold resist, you're knocking these numbers down. This is just to go from nothing to something. So chances are, if you've got a bless, and importantly, if you have a shroud, you can equip onto your mages if they're not sacred. You can have them blessed all the time and reduce this by a considerable amount. So these are filling in the gaps, but I figure we'll start from nothing and kind of build our compendium from there. Moving on, we've got Ring of Lightning. It's okay. I mean, no, it's it's bad. It's not great because Storm Spool is it, but better, mostly. You get overcharge out of it, too. I mean, sure, Ring of Lightning is earlier, but the Storm Spool is just better. But at five Air Gems, it's good. It's an economic solution. But look at this. Oh, well, actually, I don't want to skip this yet. Amulet of Missile Protection, it could be good. 80% air shield to block arrows. I mean, it's nice, but we have Robe of Missile Protection that does that for five. So, I don't know. This is half price. Sure, this is a different slot, but you're going to be fighting over MISC slots. That's kind of a problem, is the MISC slots are very packed. So stuff like this comes in handy, where it's not a MISC slot, and it completely covers you. Now, each of these different elements have different breakpoints for resists. And as you may know, lightning is very hard to resist as a breakpoint. <clears throat> and that's because, like I sh showed you earlier, just 15 shock resists may not be enough to protect your communion from lightning or thunder, even worse. But the copper plate gets you all the way to 25, and it only costs five air gems. It's awesome. So I think this is a potential big one for communions where you think they're going to be threatened by lightning. And again, you only need like 10 of these loadouts. So if you get these costs down to something like 10 gems because you're blessed and, and things like that, you're only putting this on your important mages. So it could be a pretty big investment of like 100 gems, but if it saves your communion and allows you to do your big spell and beat an army, that's a, a lot more that you could see happen with other gem expenditures. It's pricey though, so hopefully you're using it for a good reason. Okay, so copper plate, solid. Mirror armor, it's okay. Plus three MR, some protection, but it's a little on the costly side. I use it in combination H over here, 30 gems. And you can see the more combos I have, the more likely it's a good item. It means it's so good, I keep going back to it to rebuild Omni Resist combos. So Copper Plate's got a lot of those. It's pretty good. At least I thought so. Mirror Armor did okay. Magic resist is pretty important, I think, for communions. There's a lot that could go wrong without having decent magic resist, and it's very tough to take as a bless because everybody and their mothers loves magic weapons for good reasons. Robe of Missile Protection. If you need it, cool. If you don't, move on. But it's there, and it's five air gems. I, I don't think I would really take it. It could help with Seeking Arrow, though. And maybe some weird stuff that gets annoying, like a Thunder Arrow Archer Spam. Fire Arrows could help with that. Dancing Shield is um, 
pretty unique. It, it adds a protective force, I think protective force 20. Let's just double check. Yeah, so 50% to add that to your prot. So it's pretty good. Whoopsie. Pretty good, but at 10 gems, eh, probably not going to take it. That's also why you don't see this yes here for spam. Storm Spool, solid. The rest of these, eh, it's just five shockers. Is five shockers is 80% energy of 15 gems. Um, prot stacking is just, it's, you're going to be costing a lot of gems chasing prot on your communions. And it could help a little later, and I'll mention that. Storm Spool, pretty solid. Made a few builds with those. Rainbow Armor is okay. It's pretty low MR, though. Sure, you get Reinvigoration, but are you going to do that for 10 gems? All right. Surprisingly, there's some stars in, in here. Um, Ring of Frost is pretty good. I mean, 15 CR, 10 is kind of like the break point for a lot of harmful frost effects. We've got the famous um, Frozen Heart, which gets 10 plus, but you know, this will, this will help you pretty good. 15's got you completely covered, but you only really need 10, I think. Coral Blade's pretty cool. The temp HP bonus is, like, massive for little mages. Let's see, actually, if one of these guys could just full-on face tank this. Um, I think I have to wait a turn for it to set in, though. And just for fun, let's give this guy a, the wrong thing so we can watch him die. Let's move them all over there. Okay, let's see their HP. There we go. So you've got to remember to give it a turn to sink in. Otherwise, you're going to be very disappointed. All right, let's hop down here and make someone's day terrible. This might not do as much damage, but we'll see. Whoa, whoa. No. Oh, there had to be a battle that same turn. Whack. Okay, well, their HP should reflect. So there you go. Oh, look at that. One HP. Thanks, Coral Blade. Okay, some of these guys just got really lucky or something. A couple other dudes died, though. Not everyone made it, but it could help save you from that if, you know, troglodytes don't decide to ruin your day. But, you know, some days just get ruined by troglodytes. Oh, man, they took on that debug sensei, too. Figured I'd throw him at him for revenge, but now nah, these dudes angry. Okay. So Coral Blade, pretty good. Gives you a temporary HP bonus, but I didn't put it in a combo because... I mean, it's just good. I don't really know what to put it in to consider it Omni Resist. It can it gets your HP up and it can help for multiple reasons because of that. A few other ones in here. Uh, Flask of Holy Water, Auto Bless is kind of nice. Ice Ages, eh. 5 CR for 10 water gems? No, thank you. The Ice Helm for 5 CR, 5 water gems? Not bad. Remember, we only really need. 10 cold resist to kind of cover ourselves. Murdering winter could get a little bit more painful in, in icy provinces like that guy. 
but 10 should get us there for most things. Ice Pebble Staff's expensive. Blue Dragon Scale Mills, pretty decent. 15 CR, morale plus 4 and prod. 10 Water Gems though, so a little more expensive. Now, problem with this though is there's a lot of other really good chest slots. And you could use other items to kind of get cold resist a little more quickly. So it's a good item. It's just that there's a lot that can substitute it for pretty much just as cheap. I mean, we've got a frost brand and a ice helm where if you use a hammer, that's six water gems versus doing 10 for, for this or eight. Sorry. So two gem difference, but. Kind of gets you there anyways, in a different way. There's also uh, birch boots later, which is what I mainly tend to do in combination with the ice helm. Now, getting water ellies, who's complaining, right? And dang, the frost brand is just good. It's a good item. But water elementals can help in a lot of different ways. But again, it's not really technically Omni resist. It's just really helpful to have. Demon Bane. This is kind of the star of the show. 15 fire resist and 5 bonus HP for 5 water gems. Like, what? So this is amazing on a communion. Not only do you not have to take any of these other crappier fire things poor fire by the way fire just gets shafted in my opinion but um where was i there there but you get it for just five water gems so and who's complaining about needing to use a weapon slot even though it's two-handed but yeah, who cares? They're a communion mage. Slap it on them, and now you still have your other misc slots. You don't have to use the Ring of Fire. Now you could get other resists. It's really good. Rhyme Hobbard. Yeah. A lot of stuff in Earth sucks, but there's a few standouts. I'm going to jump to them. Faithful's kind of cool. Lucky and Affliction resist, but eh, 10 gems, and you need the Earth Astral Cross path, one of the very nice cross paths. Lead shield's pretty good. Plus four magic resist. You get some encumbrance though, so you gotta watch out. And it is 10 earth gems. But at the same time, not a lot is competing for that second hand slot. So it could get in there easily if you need to use the misc slots. And I use it on a few of these different builds on DFJ. 30 gems, 30 gems, 35 gems, so pretty good. Okay. Lightning Rod is another standout one. Two-handed weapon, 15 shock resist. Again, you could use your other slots for other things. So pretty handy, but 15 is kind of on that borderline of probably not good enough to be fully resistant to things like Thunderstrike, because that guy's like 25 plus. Just to get it exactly like 30. Uh, 26, and then increases. And then you got that little effect afterwards. It's pretty painful. Okay. Moving on here, we've got few other guys, I mean, I'm going to skip over some of these red ones because it's not really worth talking about. Even the yellow ones sometimes. Elemental Armor. 15 gems sounds expensive, but when you factor in all these different resistances, it's pretty good. It's just, you know, 10 shock resist doesn't fully get you there, so you'll need something else. 10 cold resist gets you there. 10 fire resist is... Mm, you want a little bit more. So it does allow you to make some combinations, and, and I've done them, and they end up pretty good. So B, F, I, 30 gems. It's not bad. 
But a big part of it too is maybe you have a bless that kind of tops this off, and then it would work out pretty well, even though it's relatively expensive. It does take up less mage turns having to craft one rather than a bunch of different things though. Maybe you could factor that in. Armor of Knights. Now, this is kind of one of those items where it gets you so much prot for so cheap, five earth gems, that it kind of does act as fire resist. So remember that um, a lot of fire resist, it, it just counts your prot, but half of that. So in a way, I think this guy's 23 prot. So in a way, we're getting like a good 11, 12 fire resist. So that's pretty solid for five earth gems. And that'll pretty much get you there. So it should be considered for fire resist if you need it. And you know, prot helps on other things too. Slave matrix, master matrix. I'm not gonna get into why those are good. They are good. Um, some nations don't need them, some do. They're kind of their own specialty. Enchanted Shield is okay, Prod. Now, Astral has a lot here, a lot of useful stuff. Rabbit's Foot Charm. Twist Fate is pretty nice. Protects you from Seeking Arrow. Pendant of Luck. Luck is pretty nice, too. It has a chance that you don't die. Amulet of Anti-Magic. Now, this is all over the place for me. I use it in a ton of different builds because it's very cheap for a very solid MR. You saw the lead shield, that's 10 for four. Now, this is just pretty good, but it's gonna eat up your misc slot probably. And you're probably not gonna be running magic weapons, so you will likely want this on your communions unless you wanna be susceptible to a winds of death or a Leprosy play. So you got to watch out for that. Lucky coin, you get some prot. Luck, not bad. 10 gems. You saw that other item, Faithful, earlier that costed the same but different gems. Robe of Shadows. I like Ethereal. It's, it's pretty handy. Do I spam it? Yeah, I sometimes spam it. But at the same time, a lot of magic effects don't really care. So will you get a lot of mileage out of it? Uh, I don't know. I kind of would debate this. Shield of the Accursed. It, horror marking the attacker. I don't know. Like, I, I really don't know. It costs a bunch of stuff, and it's kind of funky. I'd have to test this guy out. Shroud of the Battle Saint. This is where you could use your Bless to help make these items cheaper. These combinations cheaper. Again, if you're only getting one thing out of it, though, it's not going to make it much cheaper because it costs five gems to begin with, right? But maybe you could hit three of these at once and cut that down to 15 gems, and now those three items you have to make, you discount six gems from that from the hammers, and now you're at nine gems per mage, which is pretty reasonable. Again, you're only going to be sending like 10 mages. You're not going to do this for every mage in the game. Fool's Luck might be useful. Um, it's just kind of funky, and I mean, the pen bonus is nice too, so it's just not bad. Ringer of Returning is nice, although expensive, and I don't really know if you want it on your communion mages anyways. You kind of need them to be there. If you needed to send them back, you could just cast Returning, so maybe for important masters it could be in handy. I don't yeah, it's expensive though. Starshine Skullcap can get you 2 MR, but for 10 Astral, and you usually want it for the Astral bonus, so yeah, I don't know. These are all items, by the way, that are normally very good for communions for different reasons, right? Like Ring of Returning on a Master can be great, or on some Suicide play. Skullcap is great for getting that Astral. Crystal Shield is great for Power of Spears spheres auto cast but this is not something you're going to equip on all your communion slaves that's completely out of the question and same with banner of the northern star really solid you might want it to be around your communion or a part of it but 
you're not going to equip everybody with it. It's not going to save them from anything. Death is really lacking. Second most lacking for communion support. Shade mail is good, though. There's no question about it. Shade mail is pretty handy. But can you equip all of your mages with shade mail? Well, there's a debate that you could make with me that, well, this is 15 gems, which is actually 13 gems. And if you can stealth all of your guys, instead of getting bombarded by spells, doesn't that kind of save you having to do all of this to begin with? And the answer to that is yes, but not in combat. Once you go into combat, you're still just as susceptible to all of that. So it can help. It could do half the job. And you could do some even cooler things with it, like magic phase support with hidden mages, uh, because they will join the magic phase if they're stealthed and fight on the province. No, no, no. The lantern shield spam. I did try this out on a communion, but I was kind of disappointed. It summons three corpse candles, but it doesn't summon them like the spell summon corpse candles does. It summons them directly in front of the mages. So at first I was like, hmm, this is kind of cool. We could put this on like five guys and there's 15 corpse candles to distract the enemy. Well, no, it spawns them directly in front of them, so it doesn't do what the Corpse Candle spell normally does, which is distract a back line because they get summoned on the battlefield edge. So, I don't know. It's, I think it might even be red. It's probably not worth considering. Nature. So we got the Snake Ring, which... You only really ask for 10 poison resistance, but they give you 30. So, of course, you're going to want to take a bunch of these if you don't have poison resistance. But poison resistance is pretty easy to come by. Still, though, there it is. There's your answer. Just make a snake ring. So you can see a ton of combinations use it. Birch Boots, here's that other 5 Cold Resist I was talking about that you could combine with the Ice Helm to get to 10. So I do use it in quite a few builds because those slots are not really in high demand. Not a lot of boot slots. I don't think I mentioned it in the beginning. Um, Brimstone Boots could sometimes compete with that slot. 15 Fire Resist, but it costs 10. So, you know, give and take somewhere. But Birch Boots might compete with it for Cold Resist, if you were missing both to begin with. Dire Pelt, I mean, it's pretty nice. 5 CR, some Prot, nothing really special. Ice Shield, no. Gloves of the Gladiator, no. The Lion Pelt, it's some Prot, and it's cheap. Acorn Necklace, this is a standout one, and it's not the one that summons the... Vine men. This, it actually just gives you 15 shock resist and lucky. So it's pretty good. Um, 15 shock resist is nothing to scoff at. It doesn't quite get you there to full resistance, but lucky is really nice to put onto that. And it's 10 gems, and you saw those other things before that gave you lucky, aside from the amulet, which gives you it for 5, but those other combined items... Don't give you another resist and also give you lucky. So in this, you get both, and that's pretty good. Amulet of the Giants. Getting more HP is nice for the same reason of the Coral Blade, but it's not that much HP, and I, I think I'd change this to yellow. It's not enough to really take you there. It is cheap, though. And then green dragon scale mail and hydra skin armor pretty much do double duty. One just comes a bit later. So 15 PR, 15 PR. This one gets you regen though. That's kind of nice. So I tend to use that one for my combinations as opposed to this guy. Mistletoe garland, 5 PR, 5 is not enough. 
Maybe you have minor poison res, so you could stack it on there, but it also gives you lucky. <clears throat> so we, we can see these two here. Lucky and some resist. Use it on one build, build L, let's see. Ooh, build L. Sucks. That's 30 gems and 15 blood slaves. I wanted to use the garland combined with the heart of life to get my 10 PR. I just wanted to try something new. That brings us to blood. Hmm, just no. Lifelong, sure, you could slap it on whoever the hell you want and have a good time. Is it great for communions in general? No. It can help, but it's not like you need it. That's a lot of slaves. That's like a ton. Heart of Life, 10 Reinvigoration, 5 Poison Resistance for 15 Blood Slaves. It's actually pretty good. Like, that's a ton of Reinvigoration. And that's why I wanted to make that little side build. But again, it was kind of expensive. So, again, you could take other blesses to reduce some of these costs that I've shown on here. You know, you get double with this um, Earth Bless, and uh, you could get some Major Shock Res, Poison Res. I mean, these are very common blesses. So you could just use these combinations to supplant whatever you want so that late game, if you're fielding little stinking humans, they don't get turned into um, burnt corpses and skeletons. In either case, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll talk to you guys later. See ya!